Hi my loves and welcome to Empress Energetics. I'm Melissa and if you've been here for a while, you know that we address many, many different pillars because the Empress in us is the embodiment of cosmic mastery. It's the accumulation of mastery over many, many eons here in this lifetime to serve humanity, to serve the crystallization on Earth. And this is why we usually go deep into topics like sexual healing, sacred union, biospiritual anatomy, expansion of belief systems. So currently, I'm really, really focused on business, on foundation building, on foundational wealth, flourishing in a good and God way. And there's a specific reason for that. Because we all are here to build a cosmic ministry. What does that mean? Our cosmic ministry is our business. So why am I so focused on that? I've met so many of you now through group containers, through one-on-one -on -one coaching, just through conversation, through the comment section and just feeling you, through emails that you've sent me or questions that you've sent me. And what I realized in this is the immense wealth of wisdom and elevated consciousness that is part of this grid, which is honestly, I, I don't even have words for how honored I am to serve this or to be a part of this. Because this is, to me, not just a YouTube channel. To me, this is grid work. We're coming together as community. We're coming together as a specific frequency, like a specific taste, a specific archetype almost. As much as there is this elevated consciousness and this elevated perception, as long as we're still investing our time into someone else's vision that is not aligned with our highest vision, unless we're gifting our precious time to a cause that isn't really ours, that isn't really what God wants us to do here or what God sees and foresees for us, if we're still trading our time for money, if we're still not able to properly finance ourselves through our gifts effectively, and if we're not able to finance others through our gifts, we haven't learned or mastered the basics of earthly existence. We can only go as high as we go deep. So even though so many of us have this great energetic perception, so many of us are born with this high encodement. I don't utilize the word starseed much anymore because it's very misunderstood but if you can see it from a pure perspective a lot of us are hybrid star seeds or just very elevated consciousness whatever word you want to put on that and that is a result of many 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 lifetimes of mastery it is probably very easy to concern yourself with deep inner work go deep into self-healing explore the realm of astrality, the realm of the cosmos. Maybe you are living in meditation, right? Maybe these things are very easy for you and you are very drawn to them. But what I mean is you can only go so high as you go deep. Yes, deep in your inner work, but deep also meaning anchoring something here on earth. Because as you become advanced and an adept of cosmic matters it is your responsibility to become advanced and adept of earthly matters how do you do that by bringing everything you've gathered on your advanced astral cosmic spiritual travels the metaphysical realm back onto this earthly plane and how do we do that best by offering a service, creating a business, actually grounding it into the physical. 
And this is done by creating wealth, a wealth of service, a wealth of financial flow. And as long as our wealth is only spiritual, there, there'll be a certain stagnancy that we find ourselves in. We might have the illusion of progress and advancement, but unless we actually build something in the physical, and unless our spiritual progress is actually measurable and money is a really beautiful way to measure true spiritual progress. And when that happens, when you marry both, when you marry the earthly and the cosmic or the earth and heaven, we have true evolution. Now, I'm not saying that everyone is here for this path. And I'm also not saying, unless all of us are doing this, only then can humanity evolve. I don't believe that's true. It's a hierarchy. And there will always be the ones that will pave the way and others will follow. So if in this lifetime you simply don't care and you're cool with this hermit style of, I'm just going to meditate on top of a mountain and I'm just going to do the energetic work, but I'm not going to anchor something here in the physical. Okay, cool. That's all right. If, if that floats your boat, you do that. But I feel like a lot of us want the true experience, like all of it. Like the expansiveness of the metaphysical, actually touching God, actually feeling God through our actions. And at the same time, live a beautiful, abundant and successful life. Like you are here in this human existence. Do you know that even, like it's always said, the gods envy us for this. We have the ability to experience earth that is so, so special. And why would we squander this by rejecting one vital and probably, I don't know, the most vital, but equally as vital aspect, which is earthly success? An earthly expansion. And when we learn what it means to be a good householder, which is a really important earthly skill, we will unlock the next layer of human existence for us. And we will also unlock the next layer of godly existence within us. And what a good householder means is you can easily and effortlessly sustain yourself through your greatest gifts. And not only sustain yourself, but also sustain others, help others thrive. That's what it means to be a good householder. The word is probably not the most appealing, but essentially that's what it is. You can also call it temple keeper, or whatever you want. The empress in us, in full effect, creates empires. She works for God's vision. She creates God's vision through herself. She changes the way money flows. She changes the way money is perceived. She creates jobs that are in integrity for herself and for others. And this is why I am so immensely passionate about this topic. Because this is the grid work we're doing. When the Empress Energetic in you is active, you truly have the ability to change the infrastructure of this planet one at a time. First for you, right? I'm not saying you're going to change the infrastructure for every human being on this existence, but for you. And that's what matters most. And with that, once you're in this power of yours, you will change more people's lives by accident, just by building your empire, just by creating more abundance, more flow, more service. As an entrepreneur, you change more lives by accident than someone who doesn't anchor anything in the physical with all the intention they put on it. If that's what you're here for, because that's what I'm here for, 
stay here, stay tuned. So to create heaven on earth and a heavenly existence, we need beings of high integrity like you and me to change the infrastructure of money flow. And we do that by creating a business of high integrity, a business that is run and governed by God's word. And you know, I don't use the word God or ministry in any religious sense. We're taking the word back. We're reclaiming what was always ours. And so we're infusing the word God with more truth because that's what God is. God is truth. And for a lot of us, what I see as a theme in sessions is that we desire a life of abundance and we desire a life of integrity, of truth, and yet it hasn't shown up in the physical. And there are two reasons. Now, these reasons are going to be a little more abstract because I can't give you the step-by-step -step guide on how to get rich because that's going to look different for every single one of us. But if we zoom out, two major reasons why wealth isn't here for some of us is the one side of the pendulum is you haven't even scratch the surface of your essence, meaning you don't know yourself yet. You don't know your purpose. If you're someone that's constantly asking for their purpose, you don't know yourself yet. And if you are here as this advanced being and you don't know yourself, there's no point of you receiving wealth or receiving money flow because you don't even know what to do with it yet. You don't know who you are. You don't understand your role in this lifetime. You haven't gotten the bigger picture. And so that's one reason why money hasn't flown to you. Now you might ask, okay, like there's a shitload of people that are not in integrity. You might say there are a lot of people that are evil or a lot of people that are very selfish and they have a, they have a lot of money. Why does it work for them? We are governed by different rules. If you attained a certain mastery over many, many eons, and you're a very advanced, benevolent being with high encodement, everything that you do has a greater ripple effect. And you are governed by a different set of laws. This is not your training ground this time for child's play. So you have mastered too much and you've accumulated too much mastery in other lifetimes for you now to receive abundance or have money flow to you and be distracted by it. That's child's play. You don't do child's play. You are higher evolved than that or you're a higher evolved being. So there is no point for you to be concerned with child's play and receive money just to not know what to do with it or invest it in the wrong things. You're here to create a vision of integrity and a vision of truth. So for you, it's about getting to know yourself. So if you're constantly asking for your purpose, what you're actually asking is, let me get to know God through me. Let me get to know my essence. Let me understand myself more. And once you touch your essence, once you've gotten to know yourself, once you've gotten to know God through you, you won't ask for your purpose because your purpose is very clear. Your North Star becomes very clear. Your gifts become very clear. And you will never ask for your purpose again. And it's also not like your purpose is anything that could be explained in a sentence or in an elevator pitch. Right? A lot of times when I work with people in QHHC, the main question is always, what's my purpose? And oftentimes people expect this perfectly curated one sentence answer of, this is your purpose now. And that's not how purpose works or feels like. Your purpose is wordless, but as you understand yourself, as you know God through you, 
Everything you do is on purpose and in purpose and on mission. And again, it's not this perfectly eloquent elevator pitch of, oh, I am here to do, do, do this and this and this and this. Your purpose is wordless. And your purpose is actually something that is lived every single day. All the things you tried to attain money, all the hustling and bustling hasn't worked out for you yet or hasn't been beneficial or like feeling like the seeds you planted haven't been able to be harvested. It's because you're still concerned with child's play. You're still working in the superficial realms. And you have to get to know yourself more. And in that, naturally, once you're on track, once you remembered your essence, wealth is a very natural byproduct of your service. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen for you. But if all of these endeavors that you tried and you worked so hard haven't worked out, there's a reason for that. Go deeper. And then. And I, again, I get it. It's kind of abstract. But for a lot of you, that might resonate, right? That was a reason why wealth couldn't show up for me five years ago. I didn't even know who I was. I haven't touched my core yet. I haven't remembered myself. I haven't remembered God through me. So the other end of the pendulum is those of us, which I feel like a lot of you are resonating. You're very advanced. Right? Meditation. You are very concerned with the metaphysical. You've been going really deep into your healing, the inner work. You've been doing it all. You've been an adept in the energetic realm. You've been an adept in the astral realm. You've been an adept in the metaphysical realm. Right? I know a lot of y'all are. A lot of you are very advanced energetically. And yet, you forgot that it, you're here to merge that. And you've been so concerned with the constant evolution and evolution. And you've ingested so much. But you haven't digested it. And that creates like almost like a, a riff or a disillusion. Like you've read all of these books. Maybe you've attended so many plant medicine journeys. And you've experimented with the mushroom kingdom or whatsoever, right? You've read all the books. You've went into transcendental meditation. You're so comfortable there that you don't want to come back to this earth. You don't want to concern yourself with earthly matters. I know lots of y'all, a lot of you. Actually, a lot of my friends or a lot of the people that are closest to me fall into that category. And I'm just like... Yo, if that person was to put their spiritual prowess into earthly matters, they would create such a heavenly reality for themselves and for others. Because as much as there is bliss in these realms, unless this bliss is anchored and you see this copied in the physical, like you have an abundant life, you get to travel, you get to be of service. You get to create offerings that change people's lives. Unless that's happening, it's kind of an escape room. And I get it. It feels cozy. It feels comfortable. And maybe you're very comfortable with not that much physical abundance. And you're okay with that. But you came here to merge these two. And maybe you even hold belief systems like... Well, you can't take money into the afterlife or the next layer of life. Or you can't take your, your belongings to your grave, right? Some sort of that. Maybe it's not the exact belief system, but some people subconsciously hold that belief system. Like they work so much in the metaphysical because they're like, oh, everything earthly doesn't really matter. And that is not true. So let's take this example and whether it's exactly that or it's just something in the subconscious that is like that, you can't take money to your grave or all the physical doesn't matter when you're dead. That isn't true. And there's this, this sentence 
by Goethe that gets me every time I hear it. Alles Vergängliche ist nur ein Gleichnis. All transitory is but a metaphor. So hold that closely. If there's anything you take from this video, take this with you. Everything transitory is but a metaphor. So yes, maybe you cannot take bitcoins, euros, dollars, like the semi-physical currency, the, the number in your bank account. Maybe you can't take this into the next layer of life or you can't take it into your grave or ashes or whatever's going to happen. That's meaningless. The physical currency, the euros, the dollars, the bitcoins, they don't mean anything on other planetary existences on different dimensions they're only they only have meaning here because we give it meaning so yeah i agree in that part but it is just the metaphor and all of the gifts you had to master to create income to create money flowing to you all of the skills that you had to master that you had to accumulate that you had to like work on all these gifts and skills are eternal you take them wherever you go you've acquired these gifts and skills and it takes a certain type of spiritual prowess to learn to create streams and that is something that belongs to the cosmos, that belongs to your astrality. So this is something that no one will ever take from you. You've mastered that. You acquired that. Because what is money really? Money is the building block. What is money? It allows you to create in grace. So by creating streams of money flow in the physical, what do you really do? You removed your creational shackles and you've learned how to create in God's speed. You have more creational freedom, which is a very, very godly characteristic. Essentially, it is God. God is creation. So by you acquiring the skills and you mastering your gifts of creating streams so money can flow to you, what you actually acquired is freedom of creation. A very godly skill set, a very godly virtue. And all of that, that doesn't just vanish. It is in your blueprint now. You will take this into your astrality, into your cosmic realms, wherever you go. That now is part of your mastery. That is not something that only belongs to the earthly existence. So when people deny wealth, financial abundance, they haven't yet realized that it is just a metaphor. And that everything that you attain in the energetic realm, you haven't anchored it. It's not written in your blueprint yet. It's not imprinted in your astrality unless you show in the school of earth that you can create this in the physical. So with that, I hope that for some of you, I was able to add a different layer to money. And what money really is. And none of us, none of us that are watching, none of us that feel called to any of this, will create money for the sake of money. It's so much deeper than that. And so the reason why it isn't here for you yet, is because you haven't stepped into your full service yet. It's because of limiting belief systems. It's because you don't know yourself yet. It's because you are you're asking on how to generate money instead of asking how do I generate service. I don't care about money. With the YouTube videos, I don't care about how instantaneously money flows back to me. 
I don't care about having another like job on the side to finance this ministry. Because for me, what makes me truly happy is that all of the challenges that I had in this life, they weren't for nothing. But they were for me to gather wisdom for me to make mistakes so I can then pass it on to you. So I can then give you not only a glimmer, but a whole like freaking world of hope and a world of knowing and a world of, of principles that will elevate you and that will help you to achieve anything, anything that you desire in this life. Because your desire becomes one with God. And these principles aren't mine. But they are God's principles that I discover through my life. And through truth. And through mistakes I made. And I see that these principles that I learned were always God's principles. I just didn't freaking know. And so this is what this is all about. Money is a byproduct of intelligent streams. And money will allow you to translate what's in your imagination into the physical. And it doesn't matter, like some new agey people believe that money will cease to exist or we will soon have different systems. It doesn't matter because that skill set, you will have to implement that into every system or any system because it's universal. That same skill set, that same virtue, that same gift, that same realizations that will create streams of income, of money to flow through you is translatable into whatever will happen in the future. However money will look like in the future, that's translatable. And once you've mastered that, you've acquired it. It's almost like when people say, if, if you've been a millionaire before and you lose everything, You'll be a millionaire in a matter of, of months or years because you know you've acquired this. It's now part of your blueprint. Wealth is now part of your blueprint. So it doesn't matter if you lose it all because you know the way to it. It's now a pathway. It's a skill. It's a gift. It's a virtue you've acquired. The main reason I'm so passionate about this is because all of that is grid work. And grid work, yeah, it could be actually working on the crystalline grid of the earth, working with the land. But grid work happens when we walk certain systems and certain infrastructures back to home, back to their truth. And when we look at business, when we perceive business a different way, when we perceive money a different way, we work on the money's grid. We purify money. We purify what people feel when they hear the word business. This is what we do in the garden container. That's why I opened this up. The one-on-one -on -one garden container is here to purify the way we perceive business and build our garden, our cosmic ministry. And yeah, we could call it business, but it's so much deeper than that. And I really believe if all of us here would look at what business is from a more truthful perception, we'd all be entrepreneurs by now building our own empire rather than building someone else's or being passive and only being concerned with the energetic realm and the metaphysical realm and the spirit realm. And while this is important, you miss 50% of the work when you do this. And I know that a lot of you are very advanced. You have a very advanced shamanic perception. You've been doing really deep healing work, really deep transmutation work, really deep work with the ancestors and your bloodline. And so for you, it's even more important to translate that into something tangible, into a tangible business, your cosmic ministry, because that's what a business really is. A business is is the space, the container in which you receive the word of God and you share the word of God. It's the garden that we nourish and the garden that will nourish us for generations to come. So many ways that you can serve and it does not have to be complicated. And when I say we receive the word of God and we share the word of God, release all religious connotations because this can simply look like you're really freaking good at multi-level marketing. And because God, your essence is alive in you, 
you just by sharing it with with your essence you change people's lives it doesn't mean that you're a pastor preaching in the church that's not what it's about but you holding the light of your essence in reverence and you doing god's work through your unique expression you're building a cosmic ministry yeah you talk about multi-level marketing or you talk about sales but what you're actually doing is you're preaching other people just might not know it you're undercover right you're an undercover pastor or an undercover priestess maybe you're super creative maybe you're a photographer and you pass on your eye for beauty because what is photography you capture the beauty of this existence that's deep you capture the beauty in someone's eyes and maybe you do it like no one else because you have a different eye for it because you hold god within you and you live god through you so maybe now you create workshops for other people maybe you have a patreon where you share tips maybe you have a community of aspiring photographers and they just don't know where to even start like i'm one of them i would love to get into photography i don't know where to start that's that's the service idea right there maybe you gather people in different places and you do photo shoots maybe you have beautiful presets and you know how to edit things like no one else does and money will just be the natural byproduct of that maybe you're a coach right maybe you love to create transformational spaces and that's your way of creating service and maybe as a coach yeah you have one-on-one -on -one work but maybe you have courses or maybe you gather people in retreats maybe you just love to educate maybe you just love to share your word whether that's through linkedin through x on youtube on instagram whatever it may be right there's there's a million different ways maybe you love fashion and that's your cosmic ministry because through fashion you show people that god expresses itself through beauty and by you dressing yourself in royalty you represent remembrance of our cosmic royalty that's deep and maybe it looks like stupid little reels where you present your outfit of the day or maybe that looks like an amazon shop in which you share your super affordable finds and show people that it doesn't have to be expensive to dress well maybe that looks like a tiktok tiktok shop and it might look super superficial on the outside but you're sharing yourself that's your cosmic ministry there's so many ways to create intelligent streams of income for every one of you and it might look superficial but it isn't and that's where your more intangible perception shift comes in because yeah if you share it and you don't give an f and you just want to make money and you have no spark of god in you because you're a freaking robot moving through life unhealed yeah then that that is superficial but it's probably not going to be super successful that way but if you hold that light within and you touch your essence and you know what you're here to do and that's just fun for you you just love fashion or you just love music that's your cosmic ministry maybe you're a musician and yeah maybe you do concerts or maybe you're a dj and you do live gigs but also you teach people about sound healing maybe you teach people on how to clear their throat so they can actually hear their true voice for the first time in their life because there's honestly nothing quite as potent as to hear your true voice there is th the healing that occurs when someone thought they can't sing and then they actually touch their voice their whole being is changed maybe you teach them production maybe you teach producers how to create frequency music right there's so many ways for you to share your gifts and create streams of income you don't have to be an expert on level 100 in fact it's even better if you're at level 5 because you're if you're at a level 100 
Yeah, you might be an expert, but you might have forgotten your consciousness on level two or level three. And so someone that is on level two or on level three, they can't resonate with you anymore because you're now speaking a different language. Maybe you remember your consciousness on level 95, but you don't remember your consciousness on level five. So even if you have no skill or you feel like you have no skill, but you're excited about learning something, share that, share that even better. Guys, I don't know shit, but I'm super curious about learning. So here's what I've learned. Here's what someone like me that doesn't know anything, that doesn't have any gifts has learned. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. Because soon you'll be on level two and someone on level one will resonate with you. Someone on level one might not resonate with someone on a level hundred because they don't feel worthy yet. They don't feel or believe that they can attain that yet. They haven't remembered God within. They haven't remembered the power of benevolent, hopeful, faithful expectation yet. So they don't believe that they can do this, but they believe that they can be at level two, like you are. You see? So whatever it is, once you shift your perception around money, your perception around business, and you see everything you're doing as a part of your cosmic ministry, you change the infrastructure of money, of the way money flows to you, the way you perceive money. That, my love, that physical change, first the intangible change, but then that physical change, that's what I'm so passionate about. Because not only will your life blossom from it, it has to, by law, because your cosmic ministry is your truth. And when you're in truth, you're under God's mighty covenant. And everything that's done under God's mighty covenant, and that's what the word truth means in Hebrew, which is just absolutely fascinating. Everything that you do in truth, and we spoke about that when we spoke about magnetism a couple videos ago, everything you do in integrity with your magnetic field, truth, you are now under God's protection, under God's mighty covenant. And everything that is done under God's mighty covenant will be fruitful, will be successful. Because what is created under God's mighty covenant is always successful. Nothing that God created is unsuccessful. The sun is shining like it was intended to shine. The ocean is abundant, rich in fishes like it was intended to. The wind is windy. The rain is wet and rainy. Like everything that God created is working the way it's intended to. Because God does not create something unsuccessful. And so if you perceive your business from a truthful lens as your cosmic ministry, you create in truth. And everything that is created in truth will be successful. I love you. I went live last week. If you want to hear a couple more of my life updates, because again, I started sharing at not a level hundred, but I started sharing my teachings and what I've learned at level whatever, 10, if you want so, because it's more relatable. And I wanted you to see in real time that principles work. And so I shared a live. I don't know if you can find it, but it's on our live videos about like some of my life updates and how my life is flourishing and blossoming and what's going on behind the scenes. Because as we come together here, I, I feel like there's a lot of potency in just my personal experiences and the way my life is unfolding on a very personal level. The garden container is open for one-on-one. -on -one. I pick the people very intentionally so if you're really here for it you can apply and we'll get on a call to feel out if this is a good fit and anytime 
two or more people gather, we invite God in. And magic is bound to happen. Miracles are bound to happen. And I'm really busy. But I hope to see you next week. And if not, in two weeks. I'll see you when I see you. In divine timing. And thank you so much for this beautiful grid that we're all creating. A grid of the Empress Eternal. The Empress Energetics. I love you.